Hey TCS TV viewers, it's Evelyn from the Camera Store and today we're at Colony Studios and I'm here with Jason Ng. Hi everybody, welcome to the studio. Today uh, we're going to talk about the new GFX 100S system. And the reason is, is because today we're doing a demo to show people what this camera is all about. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about some of those reasons why you've been compelled to look at the GFX 100 system. Right. So initially it started as um, one of my assistants, Aiden, just wanting to um, get a new camera system and he was thinking about getting the Canon and I was like, you know what, why don't you just look at the Fuji? It's the same price, um, it's got a large sensor and he was shooting a lot of medium format film at the time. He brought the camera in, uh, we shot it side by side next to my Sony A1 and we I think it tested an R5 at the same time. but. Um, even at laptop screen size, the, the detail in shadows and the way that the camera handled like gradation from uh, highlight to shadow was just, I couldn't unsee it. It tortured me um, until I inevitably bought the system myself. Well, let's talk a little bit about compression. So what does that mean for portrait photography? When I think about compression, it's also, there's two things. There's compression and there's distortion. Compression is pulling your background sort of closer everything gets a little bit tighter with a longer lens. And then the wider you get, um, if I was to take my phone up to you and tip it like this, um, all I would see would be forehead and yeah. uh, shoulder. <laughs> we don't want that. Yeah, so, uh, but you can use that to your advantage now. I mean, as there's no limits to creativity, if you like shooting um, wider and getting a little bit of distortion in the limbs, or if you like something longer, um, you have the ability to pull everything tighter and, and have that nice clean frame. Or um, amazing bokeh, uh, depending on what your style is. But the sky's the limit now. There you go. Now, of course, you picked up the GFX 100, which is kind of a very classy, sexy looking camera. Um, but then we have the new form factor that feels a little bit more like that DSLR right. style. Right. Um, how do they feel? Like, how do they compare for you? So, there's two sort of things going on. Um, I feel like Fuji really called back to the classic. Uh, pro body camera where they gave you a built-in vertical grip and they did it in a mirrorless camera that has a fully usable autofocus system. It doesn't miss, it's good, it's got a good viewfinder. I like that because I spend a lot of time shooting vertical, so having that grip is important to me rather than getting the sort of where does my pinky go with the smaller body. So that being said, um, I, I was a Sony shooter and still am, and I enjoyed having a small half body that I could throw in my bag that wasn't heavy, and I think that they have reached um, a larger target audience because now things are so compact. Nobody wants to lug around uh, 13 pounds, so there's two bodies, one for each of your needs. If you're in the studio and you're shooting a lot of vertical, um, you have both options, and they're, and they're both great. Yeah, and of course the GFX 100S, they got very aggressive on the price point too, right. so it's making it more accessible for a lot wider audience, uh, which is great to see. Today we're sitting in front of your tethering right. uh, system, your right. cart, uh, which is a great setup. Right. Um, but how did it work in, the, in that type of situation? So, um, a, the great thing about the Fuji is that um, their classic film uh, presets mm -hmm. come right in through Capture One, so you can view all of your um, uh, all of your film sim simulations real time um, without actually putting a destructive edit. There, nothing is baked in, um, and the color is good. Uh, I will say that that was probably the first thing as a Sony user and a 35 millimeter user for. You know, the last 10 years when mirrorless sort of came out, um, it was hard, color was hard. And uh, the, the standard for a long time was Canon because they just had a lot of people on their system. And then Fuji came along and they had small sensors and I, I love the color, but I couldn't commit yeah. to a small sensor. And now they've exceeded expectation and gone <clears throat> larger than that. So it made sense. And 
you look at the skin tones um, and they're great. The reds are beautiful, they're rich, they're deep. Now, of course, when it comes down to lens choice, I love a lot of the GFX lenses. Uh, they're fantastic. Some of them have a bit of their own character to them. They're, right. they're beautiful lenses. They make some very nice looking images. But if you right. want to take it one step further and play around with some stuff that has even more character, you can adapt some lenses. Right, 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 right. And that's a great point. Um, I had um, some contact 645 lenses, and I was able to find um, an autofocus adapter. And and to use that sort of legacy glass that you've always lusted for and be able to adapt it to your new system is fantastic. So um, I also have, for example, well, here's the, here's the Contax 80 millimeter, and this is an old um, 60s Nikon fisheye, um, which of course I just use in focus peaking. There's no autofocus here, but it gives you the ability to use um, some different stuff. And if you're um, just making some art portraits or creating something for yourself, it gives you the option to get some, some of that softness that you lust for from film and uh, mates perfectly to the simulations. If you're buying sort of a pro-level camera, you're spending $5,000. Um, Fuji dropping that price point down to uh, f uh, under five and, uh, and just over seven for these cameras has really been um, a game changer for medium format. I mean, traditionally, you'd have to spend $30,000. Secondly, uh, the color and shadow tonality range, you can't unsee it. Um, it's something that <laughs> once, <laughs> that once, true, yeah. once you see it, uh, um, side by side, and even at laptop size, you see the difference. So 100 megapixels doesn't have to be about, oh, I'm not shooting giant print ads or whatever that is. It's about all of that information with the larger sensor. All right, Jason, thanks so much for having us at the Colony Studio. And of course, special thanks to our friends at the Nobles Management for the amazing models that we had to work with today. It's yes. been such a great event. And of course, with Fujifilm, uh, they brought all the gear. They brought it to the to Calgary, so it was a lot of fun. Yes. Um, but where can people find more about your work and what you do, Jason? I'm the Jason Ng on the Instagram. And you can check out my website at jngphoto.com. Or if you need studio space, we are here at Colony Studios. So look us up. Check it out. YYC Calgary. Yep. Um, of course, we want to know what you guys think. Is the GFX100 system a compelling camera for you? Did this help narrow things down for you? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure you follow us on Instagram. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so we can catch you again very soon. I decided to pull Aiden on camera because oh. he was one of the people that influenced Jason to actually go with the GFX 100 system. Um, and of course, you have the 50S. Yeah. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what that experience was like and why you decided to go with GFX? Yeah, so I was needing a camera system for a little while and I looked at sort of the Sony's, Canon's, Nikon's, and you know, I was almost going to buy a Canon and Jason had pulled up this Fuji and I seen it, it was like perfectly in my price range. I, I didn't expect that from a medium format system. Them. So went and got my hands on it and it just had these magical files. So as soon as we sort of tested it out in studio, Jason was drooling over it and he couldn't look back and so <laughs> he went and bought the 100 and up had my 50S. Yeah, he had to one up it. Oh, man. So it's the story of that. Uh, where can people find your work? Yeah, I'm at Aiden James Photography on Instagram uh, or on my website. Uh, yeah. Awesome, check it out.